Good morning, everyone. This is Calculus. This is the last week. And so, uh, Bisters, you're going to be quite entertained. We've got some presentations. Go ahead and start. All right, so I'm going to be a crep, and my project was on the mathematics, and specifically some of the mathematicians involved in the movie Hidden Figures. So, for the plot summary, it's set in the se segregated part of Virginia, um, specifically at the NASA Langley um, Research Center. Um, and the three main characters are three women computers. This is back when, before, like the inanimate objects that we know as computers, it was people who would calculate different numbers um, when it comes to trajectory and path, paths for NASA. And these were Katherine Coleman, who then became Katherine Johnson when re she remarried, Dorothy Vaughan, and Mary Jackson. And they all made mathematic history in their different ways. Uh, the story is revolved around the U.S. involved in the space race against Russia, and they're trying to put their first man into orbit. This is right around when Sputnik went into went to space. Um, in addition to building new mathematics to model the trajectory of John Glenn, the first man into American man into orbit, the three main characters also had a battle of racism and sexism in the workplace because it was segregated, and all three of them were African American. As I said, John Glenn was the first American man into orbit on the Friendship 7. Sorry, it's mostly Friendship. And at the end of the movie, um, John Glenn goes into orbit. Uh, I think I have that later, is when he goes into orbit. But he was the first American man who went into orbit, and Dorothy Vaughan became the first African American female manager at NASA. And when I reviewed the movie, I gave it a four out of five because I really liked the plot of the movie, um, because I really liked watching how these three ama uh, amazing women battled sexism and racism, and were still able to come up with this amazing mathematics. But then I didn't give it five out of five because it didn't highlight any of the other achievements. It just kind of mainly focused on the fact that they were a woman and they were African American. It didn't so much focus on their intelligence and really the mathematics that were involved in sending a man into space. So I really wanted to focus on Katherine Coleman, Sue Johnson, because um, I just found it really amazing some of the things that she did. Uh, she was one of the three students chosen to integrate graduate schools in West Virginia. From there, she helped to calculate the trajectory of Freedom 7, the first American manned spacecraft into space. So that didn't go into orbit, it just went into space. Um, she also co-authored the determination of the azimuth angle at burnout for placing a satellite over a selected Earth position. And I read that report and it's just, amazing the amount of mathematics and just understanding of physics that went into that report and she was also the first woman in the flight research division to receive credit from there she went on to receive either co-authored or authored credit for 26 different reports and she was a very important part to the apollo, apollo lunar landing space shuttle and the earth resources satellite so a lot of the movie involves a lot of uh, complicated analytical geometry and um, rocket science. So this was the first part of the movie when a really young Catherine, as you can see, is discovered for having a knack for math. And so this is when she got moved up as a 13 year old into high school. That's what I read in her biography. Um, and this is a scene where her teacher asks, asks her to go in front of her classmates to solve a problem. And I don't know if you can see it there, but it's solve the equation for x and it's a polynomial factored into two trinomials. So I did the math because it's the one thing I can understand. And I started with the quadratic formula, but that was because I couldn't see how you could factor the second part of this because I, I forgot how to factor it when there was a first part to it. Um, so then I got those two answers and then I realized you could factor the second part of it. So I factored the whole thing out set it to zero, and then I found that x could be equal to zero at negative seven, one, negative one and a half, and three. Okay, so this is the rocket science part of it. So Catherine Coleman utilized a variety of different analytical geometry and Euler's method, so that's the numerical part of it, to determine the path of John Glenn's trajectory. So she talks about how you have to change from an elliptical, so that this is the orbit around Earth, and it's not perfectly circular, so it is elliptical. And the problem that they were having was they had to change from elliptical to a parabolic. So they had to, at the correct moment, um, counteract the effects of Earth's gravity to go back to Earth, but not too harshly so it, the um, satellite would burn up on pod reentry. But they had to make sure so that when they came in, it would 
happen within a 20 square mile um, area so that the Coast Guard could rescue them, rescue John Glenn from the ocean. Uh, and an uh, important part of the movie is when Catherine Coleman discovered that the use of Euler's formula was important in the calculation of the go, no go. So that's when they would activate the rockets to bring him back into reentry. And this is what um, you guys know in Euler's formula is it estimates the, the slope of the, fun it estimates the function using the slope and a point. <clears throat> and this is the Katherine Johnson's report that she co-authored with the engineer Ted, for his last name. And it's titled The Determination of Azimuth Angle at Burnout for Placing a Satellite Over a Selected Earth Position. So then you can see here that's azimuth angle and then altitude. So if you were on the horizon and there's a star, that's the example I gave for describing what the azimuth angle is. But um, that could also apply to the satellite or John Glenn's um, rocket. So then this is the, what the um, equator would be, this line, and this is where the satellite would be. And due to different um, things such as gravity or other things that can affect the orbit of the satellite, it affects where the path will be. So these are um, screenshots taken directly from the report. And these are the different burnout positions or when the satellite would be brought back into the atmosphere. And as you can see, they change differently. And I read through her report and it's very complicated. This, these are the only things I could understand. And that was because they involved a lot of geometry and I could understand the physics behind it with the uh, gravitational pull and the, pull and the elliptical orbit here. But then also the difference in this is where it would be um, in comparative to the Earth. So like latitude is this way and then degrees, longitude is this way. So you can kind of understand the graphic behind that. Um, Very good. Are there any questions? I said so. I'm sorry, I don't think that was 15 minutes.